It's the Cube covering Veeam on 2018. Brought to you by Veeam. Welcome back to Veeam on 2018, everybody. You're watching the Cube, the leader in live tech coverage. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. My name is Dave Vellante, and I'm with my co-host Stu Miniman. Mike Conjois is here. He's a solutions architect at Bupa Dental. Mike. Over from the pond? Yeah, absolutely. Over the pond, rather, to America. Welcome Thank from you. Bristol, England. Great to have you on theCUBE. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, Bupa Dental. Talk, tell us about this 90,000 person organization. Yeah, so um, Bupa is a global organization. They're, they're primarily known for their de uh, healthcare insurance. Bupa Dental is um, a market unit that uh, provides dental, NHS, and private. So we're one of the largest private providers in the UK. We've got around 460 practices at the moment across the UK and Ireland. Um, Bupa itself, 90,000 staff, 8,000 of that is dental, so that's uh, clinicians and support staff. Um, we're acquiring new practices, about three practices a week, so. Massive it's, scale. It, absolutely, it's huge. I got to ask you, before we get into it, so healthcare in England, NHS, you mentioned yeah. NHS and private. Uh, in a lot of us in the United States, you know, have, I think, misconceptions, but what, what's your take on the, the quality of healthcare in, in England, in the UK? A lot of people I talk to love it. They say it's really high yeah. quality. What, what's your take? It's, um, it's, it's certainly a different way of doing things. Uh, yeah. But then, it, it's, it's a good model, I feel, because we, we all pay in. Everyone can get that healthcare they need. They don't have to worry about being ill. You know, being ill shouldn't bankrupt you. So, we, we do the NHS and private side of things, it's, it's usually a lot of the same clinicians that run those, um, those, those models, but the, the privates, uh, you tend to cut the line a lot quicker, things, things like that. It's, you're paying for the, the speed of the, the access to the, the um, clinicians, things like that. Okay, so but it's a hybrid model, so if you, if, 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 if you can afford it, then you can, you yeah. can complement it, yeah. and it allows you to accelerate things. Absolutely. Okay, so. So there's still that, that level of, of quality that you yeah, can it's, pay for. It's tiered. It's but everybody's got healthcare. 100% yeah, yeah. of the citizens are covered. Yeah. Right? yeah. Mike, what, what's, the, what's the, the kind of the stresses and the changes happening in healthcare, regulation like that impact from the technology side? So at the moment, GDPR is obviously the uh, the big buzzword. I'm yeah. sure it's not the first time you've heard that this, this yeah, week. Yeah, it, it's May 2018. Uh, we've got a countdown going, things. yeah. <laughs> so, a lot of our data is patient data, so it's, it's, it's critical healthcare data. So we, we're very lucky in Bupa to have a large information governance team that manage a lot of the compliance and regulatory um, factors for us. So we need to be very aware of what we're doing with that data. We have the, the GDPR compliance side of things where we, you've got the right to forget and anonymization, but also the healthcare side of things can, can overrule that, that we are obliged to keep records for you know, certain amount, certain amounts of time, depending on ages and things like that. And, and what kind of solutions are you architecting? So we, uh, as I said, we acquire heavily. We acquire about two to three practices a week. So we are growing. So everything we look at is is scale, not where we are now, but where we're going to be. You know, we we've got plans to be at a thousand practices in in no time at all. Um, so a lot of the the legacy. Uh, frameworks that we followed, a lot of the legacy um, operational models we went with, they worked, but they don't scale well. So we need to put things, so automation and intelligence, like um, Danny's been talking about on the, key, in the keynote, it's, it's things we really need to look at. We, we've started leveraging our data a lot more. So we pull back a lot of this data, we've got so much data, but we weren't really doing a lot with it. We've started running a lot of business intelligence, uh, you know, MIS data across that, to kind of learn how our patients use, I mean, nobody likes going to the dentist. It's, it's not a, a luxury treat that people go for. So trying to make that journey easier for the patients is, is, is a kind of our end goal. We want to, to make it as painless as possible, apart from the dental bit, um, <laughs> from making an appointment to, to kind of feeding back afterwards and, and keeping that sit, uh, loop going. It's not just a one-time end-to-end uh, -end project. Yeah, so that whole experience. Uh, take us inside the, the pieces that your, your patients don't, don't see. Paint a picture of your infrastructure. I mean, 
what's there, what does it look like, and ultimately what applications are you supporting? They're the top ones. Yeah, so um, dental practice management software isn't as advanced as probably as most people would think. Each practice has got um, a virtualization host in each, so we've got 500 servers, remote branches, on an MPLS link, so they're all coming back to a central data center um, where we, we keep all our offsite backups. Those are 500 physical servers? Yes, okay. well, so they're running Hyper-V, yeah, so they've right. got, um, but they're quite low capacity, so there might be one or two VMs on each one. So, although the scale is huge, the, the kind of the density is, is quite minimal. Uh -huh. So we're, we're bringing all that back across MPLS links that we're still not in a amazing place with network links in the UK. So some of our practices, they're not the best links, they're slow. Bringing back a lot of that data every night can be you know, a massive issue, especially with the legacy software we were using previously. It's, we need, it, we need an off-site copy. We, need, we can't just cope with a local copy. We've had uh, issues where practices have failed, practices have flooded, and without an off-site copy, you know, that backup drive floating in the water made, made no difference. And, and, and how does that local copy get made? That's done in an automated way from your remote yeah, location. So it's, not, it's not some gal at the desk doing the backups no, like no, it no. used to be, right? Okay. So each practice has got um, like a, a USB or a NAS, depending on the size of the practice. Um, and obviously we centrally manage that through the Veeam console in our data center. So each practice does a, a local backup job to that, that storage every night, and then a backup copy job to our, our offsite data center um, to, to keep the you know, two copies of the data. And the office is, is closed, right? So yeah. you're, it's not like you're, you're, you're dealing with like high volume transactions that you're having to capture. You, you've got a long enough window to get the stuff offsite, is that true? Or? Yeah, yeah. So, our, our bottleneck is always network. It's, it's never source or, um, or, or target. It's, it's always network. You know, some of our links we might get 200k uploads. So, if you're transferring um, a few gig of data, it's it's never good. A lot of our data is is digital imaging as well, which is really taking off. So, you know, you used to go get an X-ray. Yep. Now it's all 3D models of a of a scan of your mouth. So those files are a lot of data. Big. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we've done cube gigs in the UK, Stu. We know sometimes those pipes are are, are pretty small. Absolutely. Okay, and so, and and, and the the primary applications that you're supporting is this dental, this you know, yeah. So we've got software. There's a couple of big players in the in the practice management software um, space. So we're kind of a split across those. They are moving towards cloud um, cloud software, but it, it's it's a slow process. Uh -huh. It's it, these are the same softwares that you'd find in a in a single person dental practice to these massive scales that we've got. So there's they're very well known across the industry. So change is, is, is quite hard for those. So you're a Microsoft shop. Uh, who's the server vendor? Uh, Dell. So Dell. Dell, you got Dell servers um, and, and and Dell storage as well. Uh, yes. So we've got Dell storage in the in the core. Um, yeah, just just e yep. Ecologic. Ecologic, and then, but Veeam is your primary uh, uh, data protection provider, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, how long have you had Veeam in there? Um, probably two and a half years okay, now. Okay, great, so let's go back yeah. to, to, to three years ago. The, the good times, um, yeah. And then, what was life like then, and you know, why'd you bring in Veeam, and, and what changed? Let's take us through that whole case yeah. study. So like I said, we're, we're highly acquisitive, um, so, that came with a certain cadence and uh, ex expectation, but we basically got what was given to us when we bought the practice. Um, there was a lot of legacy backup providers, uh, you know, all, all the classic ones, all over the place. No standardization of what was set up, what was backing up, the reporting. There was no central pane of glass to, to manage that. So it was taking a lot of um, a lot of engineer time to, to check those backups. So. Um, you know, the, the infrastructure team that look after that, they were having to dedicate possibly two engineers a day to just to check backups, which was an absolute nightmare. It's expensive as well. You know, they're, they're not cheap guys to, to hire, so you're just you're getting them to do manual admin work. Um, right. So we, we needed to change that, obviously, especially with the, the expectations of growth. Um, I'd worked with Veeam previously as a, at an MSP, so I, I knew the product, I, I knew um, how it worked. I, I kind of put it forward, I think it would be the best, uh, best idea for us to go with it. So we kind of went through a partner to, to kick off the in, uh, initiation. 
and then straight away they said, look, this is a big project, you want to get Veeam directly involved. So we had a lot of help from Veeam, the, the SEs, the, the sales guys, um, yeah, everyone we, we wanted, we, we had access to, just because of the size of it. And it was something Veeam hadn't really done before, the whole remote office, um, whole remote office scheme because of the licensing, it can work out expensive per socket. Um, so they were quite interested in it as well. Um, that was our, our primary driver was kind of centralizing all that management and the reporting and just, just freeing up time just was the main. Goal. So did you, was it a sort of a wholesale? We're, we're, we're doing Veeam, we're going all in. So Across it, 500 server. Uh, there was a big blast of it at the start. So we had a lot of physical 2003 servers. So they needed to be replaced yeah. anyway. So that was perfect timing for that. How so, convenient. Yeah, it was good yeah. timing. Um, 2008 RT. Sorry, CFO, we, ah, we got to do it. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, we're, we're very lucky actually. Our, our finance team are very trusting of us. Uh -huh. we, they, if we say this is the right solution, they kind of, well, if that's what they it bite costs. bite the bullet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, we did, we did uh, probably about 200 uh, in one go, well, in one go, over a period of a couple yeah, of months. Right. Um, in tranches, kind yeah, of. Yeah, and it, it was, it wasn't the slickest process because we were learning at the time. It's the, the network bandwidth was a big issue, um, but now moving forward, we're still replacing servers. Any um, kind of BAU replacements will always go out with this Hyper V Veeam model. Any new practices we bring on Hyper V Veeam, it's just we've we've done a lot of PowerShell scripting on the background as well. To because if you think we've got 500 posts, that's a thousand jobs running. It's 500 a local, 500 copy. Right. It's, it's a lot to keep track of, so. Yeah, so, so Mike, the next acquisition, do you have to change the infrastructure or can you drop Veeam in as a first piece before you rip out uh, some of the gear? We do tend to, to rip and replace, um, just to kind of standardize it. So we, we keep our, we, we don't want to go to 350 practices and they're one model and then there's 10 that are a different one. Sure. So we tend to rip and replace with our MPLS and our server switching, just trying to keep it as standard as possible for, for management. So how did it work? I mean, what was the result? It was pretty good, actually, yeah. yeah I mean, what <laughs> so, changed? What, what, so, what, how, how, how did you measure the success? Was it just sort of you saw it and so you liked it? So reporting before was done by an MSP that looked after us. Um, reporting was creative, shall we say. So we were getting 98, 100% successes of what, ah. they re of what they reported on. Yeah. So they may have been backing up 20 files. They had that, their, that was working. They had their thumb in the scale. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got a lot more confidence in, in what we're backing up now. Even if we you know, get, which we, we never do, but even if 30% of failures, I'd rather know about 30% actual failures than, than just be blissfully ignorant. It's, it's saved a lot of the infrastructure team's time. You know, with the scripting and the, the reporting, uh, we're pulling a lot into Power BI as well, so management can see those stats real time. It's just, you know, buzzword, it just works. I was going to ask, does it just work? So, so you save time, your, your staff saved time. Yeah. Um, what happened? They got their weekends and nights back? Or you were able to not <laughs> hire as many people? I presume you didn't fire anybody. Not that I know of, no. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's allowed them to concentrate on the work they should be doing, the, the project work, the forward thinking work. With, with that kind of block, it was not allowing these guys to innovate and, and to see where to change. They were doing a lot of reactive work, whereas now they're you know, fully proactive. They're kind of looking about what's the next thing, how can we, we get ahead of the curve. But, but why Veeam? I know we got to go, but then you, you might want to jump in when you yeah. attempt. But why Veeam relative to the other choices that you had? So, well, first of all, my experience with Veeam. I, I, I never had a bad experience dealing with them. The support is absolutely flawless. I, every, anyone I speak to, I always say, yeah, hopefully you'll never need them, but the support guys are just out of this world. The, the help they'll give and, and what they'll, they'll go above and beyond, they'll help with things that aren't necessarily Veeam just to get you up and running. Yeah, Mike, the, the last question I had for you is, Veeam's been expanding beyond just virtualization. You're using Hyper-V, was big news when yeah. Veeam supported that. They're doing a lot with SaaS these days. Yeah. You're probably not too much in public cloud, but no. what do you see, what interests you, what, what might uh, you know, bring you beyond kind of the one product you're using today? So 365 is big for us. We're, we're going to be pushing to 365 next year. So the Veeam backup for Office 365 is something we're definitely going to look at. We do leverage Azure very heavily for our, uh, our development. So things like uh, direct restore to Azure uh, are, are good for us. We can spin up a practice straight in Azure if their physical area fails. 
things like that are, are big boost to us. All right, we got to go. Uh, Mike, you going to the party tonight? Absolutely. You're, you're fired up? Yeah. Theme party, yeah. Uh, sure, yeah. All right, thanks so much for coming to the Cube. No problem. And, and Thank sharing. you for having me. All right, actually, sorry, one last question. Okay. If you had a mulligan, right. what would you do over differently? Uh, probably nothing, really. Oh, um. okay. That was easy. <laughs> yes. All right, well, thanks again for coming to the Cube. No, Appreciate thanks. it. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Back with our next guest right after this short break.